Hello everybody, my name is Travis and once again I am excited to make this video for you. It is a really great one. By now you should all be familiar with using SAS for pre-processing CSS. If you're not, that's okay. Check out this video here to learn about what pre-processing is. And check out this video here to learn about how I use my favorite pre-processor, SAS. And, and also check out this video here, it's called Gangnam Style. You watch it for the first time because it's obvious that you've been living under a rock for the past three years. I'm just playing. But for the rest of you, I have got an awesome video that's gonna flipping blow your minds. Today I'll be showing you bourbon and very exciting, I have Kyle Fiedler here from ThoughtBot, the makers of bourbon, to talk to us about it. After which I'll be stepping us through getting set up and started with these awesome tools. So say hello to Kyle. Okay, Kyle. Hey, thank you so much for uh, joining us here on DevTips. Um, we're looking today, we're looking at bourbon and a lot of the products that go along with it, uh, bitters and refills and, and neat. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what your um, relationship is to these products and, uh, and who else is really involved with this? So yeah, uh, I've been involved with almost all of them. Um, bourbon was the one that kind of, kind of kick-started it. Uh, Phil Lapierre, one of the other designers at ThoughtBot, maintains, maintains it, and he does a really great job. Yeah. Um, Basically, that grew out of a need of, at the time, at ThoughtBot, we had four designers, and we were all kind of creating our own mix-ins and extends for each project, and they were loosely based off of, you know, the, the CSS3 stuff that was getting really popular. It was called, like, probably about three years ago now. Um, and so each project had its own set, uh, and so we kind of, Phil did a great job of consolidating them, and then it's grown from there. So can you describe for somebody who's never used it or seen it like really quickly like what it is and why they should use it? Um, it's a, a small library of mix-ins and functions to help you get started on projects. Um, these are all mix-ins and functions that we've found really helpful. Um, basically counteract a lot of the, like the CSS3 stuff that hasn't been totally implemented like right now we're, we're doing Flexbox, which hasn't been totally implemented or is implemented different ways in different browsers. Yeah. Um, so we have mix-ins to kind of help alleviate uh, writing multiple lines of CSS. So how does Bourbon compare with something like Compass? So Compass is a lot bigger than Bourbon. Um, when we started out, Com Compass was, was already open source. Uh, we just felt that there was a lot in Compass that we didn't really use on every day on projects and we wanted to keep bourbon really small really compact um, make sure that it's stuff that you're going to use on almost every single project um, so that was the, the whole thinking behind it um, we've tried to keep it small so that like there's certainly a need for bourbon and there's certainly a need for people who, who use compass uh, so I like to think that this, they're more partners uh, in, in growing the SaaS community so they, they serve a different different needs for different people. Uh, now that's bourbon, kind of like a, like a foundation for all of these other extensions of bourbon. Can you go us th walk us through the other ones, neat refills and, sorry, neat uh, bitters and refills? Yeah, sure. So neat came out of me and uh, another designer at ThoughtBot, Greta. Um, our frustration with taking over uh, bootstrap sites, so I right. get a, like, either wireframes or something that was done with Bootstrap, and I look at the, the CSS or the HTML, really, and the classes are all jangled in there. Um, and I I have, like, a real passion for naming things semantically and not, <laughs> not like, grid three. Yeah, uh, I think we kind of... So <laughs> I think we kind of grew up in the same school, like, right at, right at the, you know, the, the peak or the turn of the semantic web. And if, if you kind of came up during that era, that's going to mean a lot to you. So, so yeah, it's definitely cringeworthy when you see like like the Uber divs and multiple classes on uh, some yeah. type of frameworks. So, so it definitely grew out of our frustration with that. Um, so w what I would end up doing is I'd go in and remove it. And at the time, I wrote uh, two functions that were in Bourbon. Um, one was a, a grid, like a, a static grid, so you a fixed with grid, mm -hmm. as you call it now. Um, and then I later built a flexible grid based off of that. 
um, when responsive design started to become popular. Uh, and so I wrote those, and those were great for me, but it, every time I talked to someone about them, they'd be like, oh, those are so awesome, but I don't really get it. Um, and so what we did with Knee was we made those, those simple functions into a whole grid system. Um, so that it's really flexible. You can name your your classes whatever you need to. You don't have to have these uh, wrapping row classes if you don't need them. Um, it's it's like it's a grid system for people who don't like grid systems <laughs> or don't like grid libraries. Would you agree with the idea that it moves the grid out of the markup and into your style sheets? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, and that's exactly what we wanted it to do. Um, um, we wanted it for people like we want it, So I wanted it easy enough for developers who liked Bootstrap. The idea of Bootstrap of just throwing in uh, a class into the HTML. Mm -hmm. um, so simple enough for them to do the same thing with the CSS, but then you know complex enough so that at me as a designer, I didn't have to use like a 960 grid system. So I wasn't fixed to a certain grid. Like yeah. you can go into me and change the gutter spacing, the max width, like almost anything you can change and, and make it your own. That's um, really cool. So that it's not, you're not fixed into this certain type of grid. Would that come in a workflow before or after bidders in your, in like your, um, in your compiled output? So bidders is, so we're, ThoughtBot is a consultant agency we we build a lot of web apps and um it's come out of we used to have what was called flutie which was basically a base style sheet so that as soon as you started a new project it wouldn't look like you wouldn't have times new roman all over the place and these really janky like flash me flash messages uh -huh. um but we found like over time that was growing really stale um and we were overriding a lot of it so yeah. like we'd have these Flutie styles, and then we'd override them in CSS later, and that is extra cruft that we don't want in the application. So bidders, the idea behind bidders is mostly those same styles or the same idea behind those styles, so that you know once you start a project, you throw bidders in there, and it gives you a nice looking site right from the start. Um, but instead of it sitting in a in a gem somewhere or somewhere where you can't touch it, you you actually throw it into your project files and it helps you get started faster. So it has things like a variables folder or file uh, extends folder with where you can dump all your extends. Uh, same thing with mixins. It gives you base typography, forms, and stuff like that. And the nice thing about it is so you throw it into your your own project, your new project, um, and you can like rip things out, make it your own, and basically it becomes the start, a, a great starting point. Yeah. To and now I was looking through the commit history of a lot of the, the products we're talking about right now, and it looks like Bitters is your baby. Is that is that right? Yeah. Uh, it has turned into my baby. Yeah. You have the most commits out of, like, by far in Bitters. <laughs> That's awesome. And the um, the website, the the uh, you know, the front-facing GH Pages websites for each of these are, are, like, really nice and easy to understand as well. So I'll link to those down in the description below for everybody watching. Um, and then what's, what is refills? So we've gotten to the point where a lot of people are coming to us and asking, like, they see what's happening with foundation and bootstrap and they, they see all these like components that are pre pre-made. Like a lot of developers who are coming to these, these, uh, preset, you know, frameworks are looking for these pre-made components so they can just kind of plug it in and go. Mm -hmm. Um, and essentially, uh, that's what refills is. It's just a bunch of components that you can copy and paste the code to and have like a header nav bar or a main featured area or uh, you know a section of three featured areas, um, a drop down or breadcrumbs. Um, and it's basically it's it's styled so that it looks really nice, but minimally styled um, so that it's somewhat easy to kind of rebrand it or, or redesign it so that it looks great for your site. Um, right. So would you say that um, the refills are what they, they evolved as a competitor to the components of 
uh, bootstrap and uh, foundation? Yeah, I'd like to think that they'll they'll start to be competitors to both of those. Cool. So, like, we're having we're taking a different approach to to both bootstrap and foundation, where like they include everything, yeah. and we want you to like include only include the things that you want. So, like, if you want, you know, you start off with bourbon. If you need a, a grid layout, you put in neat. If you if you're starting out on a new project, you use bitters. Um, if you need these components, you copy and paste the ones that you need instead of just having all of them. Yeah. Um, so one so thing that was, uh, like when I was exploring it for myself, I, I kind of got, got my head around this eventually, but, uh, bourbon, neat and, uh, bitter or sorry, yes, bitters are all, um, things that you install, like they're, they're, they're defined packages. You, you put the directories where they should go and link them all in and then you're, you can use them. Whereas uh, the refills are are these components where you go to your your uh, website and cut and paste the the uh, markup and the styles and if need be the Java, uh, JavaScript and you can use them one by one. You have to like cut and paste each one that you want, being selective about it. Yep. But, yeah, I thought that was really interesting as a, as opposed to and I guess this gets back to what you were saying initially that the 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 weight. Or just not maybe not the page weight, but the cumbersomeness. Is that a word? Cumbersomeness. The uh, yeah, like like <laughs> the cumbersomeness of something like um, Bootstrap or uh, Foundation, wherein all of these things are included from the get go, unless you say otherwise. Yep. Awesome. Okay, so um, I think that's that's going to be it for this little little interview. I, I'm really. I'm so grateful that, that I have you here to discuss this. I think it'll make understanding and appreciating the work that you guys have thought, at ThoughtBot have done um, go a lot further to the people who watch this video. So thank you so much. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. It was, it was nice to be able to kind of explain what, what all those bourbon stuff does. Yeah, excellent. All right, well, this concludes this segment of the, of the video, and now we're going to go look at how to use these tools that we've just discussed here with Kyle. Kyle, thank you so much. Take care, man. Yep, thank you. Bye.